Yes, the word hesychasm is a Greek word, and it just means stillness or, or silence. We think of hesychia as the inner stillness, and that God himself says, be still and know that I am God. Well, how do we find the place of stillness in a world of chaos, especially the kinds of you know, kind of world that we live in today with such chaos and hurry, you know, speed and uh, rush, the tyranny of the urgent. Uh, how do we keep that place of stillness, what St. Maximus the Confessor speaks of as ever-moving stillness? That is to say, we are still, uh, we, we still live in the world, but in a sense, not of the world, in a real sense, not of the world, of another way, another mode of existence. Well, that mode is this mode uh, hesychia, this mode of stillness, this mode of uh, being centered in God, uh, this mode of, of being still and knowing that God is God. And as the psalm goes on, that he will exalt his name among the nations. The nations are in chaos. The nations are uh, in turmoil today, more than ever. Wars and rumors of wars and illnesses and pandemics and all sorts of things. Jesus says, you'll see these things. And at the end of time, you'll even see them more. But you're not to be dismayed. When you see all these things happen, look up. Look up, for your redemption draws nigh. To look up means, again, you have to use a faculty that God has given the human being, which we call the noetic faculty, or the noose, the eyes of the heart. And so this Jesus prayer, this, this prayer that helps bring us into an ever-moving stillness, this prayer that we often pray is the Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. There are different versions that can be a little bit longer, a little shorter. The longer version, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. There's a, there's a movement that takes place. Again, what St. Maximus called ever moving stillness. And it finds the place of stillness in the midst of the storm. And as one elder told me one time, you must find that place of stillness and then move as fast as the storm moves. And the question is, well, how do you move as fast as the storm moves? Because storms will move you. You don't want to hit that outside of the, of the tornado or the hurricane. You want to stay in, in the center and yet ever moving. It's the Jesus prayer that helps us and it's the cleansing of the noose, this noetic faculty that is crucial for finding inner stillness because it's the place that can see God and know God and to rest in God. Yes, this is absolutely crucial to enter into the rest of God and not be like the people uh, in the wilderness when, when Moses brought the people out of bondage and slavery in, in Egypt and came th across the the Red Sea, and they entered into the wilderness, and they began to grumble there. They began to reason in their minds, saying, how is God going to feed us out here? And how, how is it going to happen? And how can we fix this by ways and means and by our own understanding? You know, one of the teachings of uh, our hesychastic uh, elders is to say that, you know, the rational faculty, which is so valued in the Western church, in the Western, let's say, Western Christianity and the West in general, that says reason is the highest faculty. Orthodoxy would just simply say that's not true. We acknowledge reason. It's a tremendous gift that God has given us. We do not denigrate reason. We're not anti-reason, but we are trans-rational people. We are a people that say the rational faculty this, of ways and means of trying to figure out how to fix things by uh, human knowledge through reason, that this only takes us so far. We have to transcend to a higher realm, and that's the noetic realm, where we rest in God and know that he is God. His name will be exalted in the nations. Every knee will bow, 
every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so knowing that, we, we don't have to be all wound up when we look around and see uh, all the tribulations and distresses around us. Uh, we, we don't get check out either, but we, we stay within that place of ever moving rest in God, faith that he is the Lord and he will accomplish his will and his work in this world. It is his world. And so when we hear of all the problems in the world, we're tempted to try to figure them out on, on a purely rational level. And the problem is, as all the philosophers have said, and certainly our greatest fathers like St. Gregory Palamas, he says, you know, for every rational reason, there will be a counter argument. For every argument, a counter argument. It'll go on and on and on and on and on. We saw this so often in the we see it all around us in, in the politics of our day. Arguments from both sides based on a certain rationalistic approach. It can't answer the deepest questions and the deepest problems of man because the deepest problems of man is that man has forgotten God. And Hezekiah brings us back into the remembrance of God. Just a little while, we're gonna talk about the prodigal son, how he, rem he remembered the father he had a metanoia, a change of vision. The word metanoia, in English, repentance, but re the word repentance has so much bag religious baggage. I love the, the Greek word metanoia. It has to do with the change of one's noetic faculty as noose. He was looking in one direction, and then he remembered a higher way of seeing things, and he had a, a change, a metanoia, a turning around of his noetic faculty, of his vision, and he began to see on a higher way. And he began to know that God is the Lord, and in the story of the prodigal son, that his father is, is a loving father. And so uh, there was a, a change. He, he, he came to the end of himself and all the frantic frenzy of trying to fix this world by our own knowledge, the knowledge of the tree of good and evil, uh, the knowledge that's not able to save, uh, the knowledge that St. Paul says is actually uh, it's the same as the law. Um, the law is God's accommodation to our wanting to live apart from God, to live by just rules and regulations and so forth on a rational level, which is the way most religions operate on a law base. We're called to live by grace and to live in a dance with the Almighty God and to know him personally and to share through Jesus Christ, the God-man, the life of the uncreated God, to know him. And we know him through quieting our hearts and our minds from lots of noise. We say in, in the Greek, we use the word logismi. The logismi are the little thoughts that race around our, our heads. The to-do list, the anxieties, the, uh, the head monkeys, the uh, mind weasels, the things that just uh, capture our attention day and night. If you are spending time uh, on the internet and looking at uh, news constantly and different uh, podcasts on commentaries on what's going on in the world, you're gonna be consumed with head weasels. And so Orthodox Christianity has a, a tried and tested method of coming into a place of more stillness and in we use the Jesus prayer where we, it's not a technique and it's not a mantra like an Eastern uh, religion. It's, it's simply the shortest prayer that calls out the name of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me. And sometimes I add, and our whole world, have mercy on me the sinner, have mercy on me and our dear broken world. 
It's just a simple cry of the heart that has faith and contrition at the same time, that knows the paschal joy of Christ's resurrection and also bows down in the dust as Job did. After he saw God face to face, Job said, I used to know you by the hearing of the word, by the law, but now I've come to know you face to face and I prostrate in the dirt, in the ashes, in the dust. This prayer of the heart both calls us into the resurrection, into the sure and certain knowledge of the indestructible life of Jesus Christ, the Theanthropos. It calls us up into heaven and it also returns us to the place of contrition, the remembrance that we lived in the pig's pen like the prodigal son and that we need to remember the father day and night to love his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to be filled with the holy, good, and life-giving spirit, to yearn for that with all our hearts. This is the communal way of finding the peace of God which passes all human understanding. His peace he gives to us, not as the world gives, but it is a gift from above. And so, these things, hesekia, stillness, the prayer of the heart, and the communion with God through prayer, uh, this is at the heart of orthodoxy. It's the path to the kingdom of heaven.